Bonjour, bienvenue au French Tech Podcast. Welcome to the French Tech Podcast. We're recording here at the Deep Tech Summit at the wonderful Singapore FinTech Festival. Very happy to welcome Phil, co-founder and head of applied research at Element AI. Yes. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Could I ask you to quickly introduce yourself as well as Element AI to get started? Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the co-founder there, background in machine learning, did my PhD, my, uh, my postdoc on the topic. Um, before it was cool, I like to say. Same here, sir. Yeah. And uh, Element AI, we're, um, actually we're, we were founded on the belief that uh, humans and machine could work smarter together. And by that what we mean is with all the data that's lying around, we believe that this data can be used together with AI in order to drive more, more insights and at the end more decisions and eventually to allow humans to uh, focus on the task that they find more meaningful. So. We develop products, we develop services and tools in order to help enterprises, large corporations uh, go through their AI journey. I, I love what you just said, help humans focus on tasks yeah. that they find more meaningful. Because for me, that's really what AI is all about. Yes. Now, you might have heard uh, the expression that software is eating the world. I have heard it. Famously. Yes. And now more and more people are saying that AI is eating software. Yeah. Could I ask you to comment on that? Yeah, in many ways, it's true. If you look at the, the um, results that have been happening these re recent years using more specifically machine learning, right? That right, twist yeah. of AI where you actually train machines mm -hmm. with data. The results that we're getting there are clearly able to attack more challenging problems that we couldn't do with traditional software. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, taking, uh, it's taking the lead in many ways. But in one way, it isn't. In one way, um, what all the results we are say, seeing uh, seem to be uh, stuck in the lab for one. And also, right. as, as yeah. compared to traditional software, the results we're seeing don't scale as well. We don't have machine learning engineering yet. We don't know mm -hmm. how to make these things work at scale. And also, compared to traditional software, this new stuff, it's hard to trust. It's a black box. Yep. It's just yeah, like yeah. the trustworthiness isn't there as compared to um, to more traditional software. So yes, it may be eating the world, but we have a lot of challenges ahead of us in order to develop the maturity that's needed for, um, for AI-driven software to actually be the dominant um, uh, way we approach and solve our problems. Well, I think that's an excellent point, especially when it comes to technology such as deep learning, right? Where it's all about the data and the representativeness yes. of the data compared to the real world. So it can be hard to move those solutions out of the lab and be absolutely certain about yes. what's going to happen, right? Yeah, so the, the data itself is, um, is a challenge, right? Uh, traditionally, AI and machine learning has required a lot of data. And yeah. when you talk about taking it out of the lab, it means can we work with customers? Can we work with corporations that have enough data exactly. in order yeah. to implement these solutions? So this is one place actually where there's been a lot of progress. And at Element AI, this is one thing we focused on. The products and the, the tools we built are in many ways meant to uh, allow our customers to work with reduced amount of data or data that is not necessarily as clean as it should be. Fantastic. So it really feels like it's more practical yeah. than the perfectly clean large data sets that you see in the lab. And this is a first step towards you know, that journey. Well, I have to say that's really the frontier in my mind of AI learning from small, noisy yeah. data sets, just like humans do, right? That's what, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But the way in which it's happening right now, it's, it's you know, true. Um, we use a lot of uh, synthetic data, mm -hmm. so we are able to uh, take a problem that a company has and understand it um, and just synthesize data that looks like it. And this becomes the root of a training system, like training a machine right. learning system. So that's one way. Another way is by building better labeling tools. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but the truth mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. if you can take humans and empower them to um, label data or comment on, on a data set much, much more quickly, yeah. then suddenly your very dirty data set is not an issue anymore because you can go through it, you can label it, you can clean it up very effectively. So these are some examples of ways in which we are attacking that problem. Well, and I imagine that the closer that annotation happens that the creation, to the creation of the data, the easier it is, right? Yeah, it can help right. to do it closely or it can help to uh, use older or you know less precise machine right. learning methods yeah. to yeah. bootstrap 
exactly. uh, labeling process. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Now, here at the Deep Tech Summit, you just spoke on a panel that dealt with the impact of artificial intelligence on humans. Yes. Could you tell a little bit about that panel and about your thoughts on, on yeah. that topic? Well, if you think about, again, a AI having a real impact in the world, you actually need adoption. You need people to... to use the tools and the products that you build using AI. And right now, it's a big challenge because there's this feeling that AI is a black box right. and that we can't trust what's coming out of there. Um, so a big challenge in our quest to make human-centric AI is to actually make AI systems that humans can trust. How do you do that? There's a number of, of challenges. You can think of it tech from the technological angle, which is definitely we need progress there. And we've been investing on um, using uh, something called explainability and different models to try to extract some of the information that the system has in right. order for a human to get it. But that's not enough because um, on the other side of the trust channel is a human, right? It's mm -hmm. like a tr trustworthiness is a characteristic of the relationship between the human and the machine, not only of the machine itself. So you need to help the human understand what the machine does, how the machine expresses itself, how these AI systems actually work. So we actually invest or we we partner with um, our customers to elevate their understanding, the, the understanding of the practitioners, of people at all level in these corporations, so that the trust can be transitive, can go out of the system into the engineers that work there and eventually into the company itself and the products that they build using AI are now trusted by the entire world. Transitive trust, That's I it. love that expression. Yes. I love that expression. So in a lot of that, a lot of the applications, right, that you're supporting, that you're enabling, have to do with governance, right? Have yes. to do with the way that companies make database decisions. Yes. Could you elaborate a little bit on the impact that you're having on these companies that try to bring data directly into their decision-making process? Yes. Um, so, as you adopt machine learning as your main tool for developing software, you get into the, the challenge that the, the, the system you build is hugely dependent on the, the data you feed it. Right, yeah. right. And how do you get that data? How do you make sure that this data has the characteristics that are needed? Is it biased? Um, does it contain private information? Is the private information seeping through to mm -hmm. the final system? Right. All of these questions are difficult. And you actually need uh, much more, much stricter data governance models in order to be able to address these questions. And maybe more transparency so that an external auditor could look at that data and ensure that it respects the regulatory framework that's in place where you're building the software. So all of these questions are technological to a degree and sociological to another one, and we tackle them from both angles. We build a technology that allows us to build these data governance models, but we also work with regulatory ag agencies and, and governments in order you know, to understand what processes could be put in place so to, to ensure sound data governance. That's such an interesting topic because really on the crossroads of all of these stakeholders and all of these different yeah. parties. And like you said, if we want AI to have a positive impact on the world, right, we need to create AI systems that can be trusted and we need to work on that transitive trust. I really love that expression and try to create that in the ecosystem so that people are more comfortable. And governance, I agree, yes. is definitely one element in that puzzle. Well, um, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Really appreciate it. Are you having a good time here at yeah. the Deep Tech Summit? How's it going? It's what are great. your impressions? It's my first time in Singapore, loving it. Uh, the Tech Summit is uh, chances to have a lot of interesting conversations on really deep technology. So it's fun. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today. Really very appreciate welcome. it. Have a great day. Thank you.